and every one of you who have decided to join us for our online worship service. We do thank God for you personally taking time out of your busy schedule to come and be with us on today to see if there's a word from the Lord. We hope, trust, and pray that we will say something today that will give you a source of encouragement, a source of strength. And so we thank you from the Simpson Street Church of Christ uh, for just being a part of our online worship family on today. Shall we bow? Father, we thank you again for this day that you have allowed us to wake up. It is a day that was not promised to us, and God, it is a day that we have never seen before. But because your hand was on us, God, and because your hand was over us, you decided to give us grace and mercy one more time. God, when you woke us up on this morning, you gave us brand new mercies to start our day off. And for that, we say thank you. Be with those, Father, who are under the sound of my voice, who may be watching, listening, and learning from the words that you've placed on my heart on this day. And we pray, Father, that we may not just be hearers of the word, but we may also be doers of the word. And Father, we ask right now that you'll bless those who are sick and not feeling well, those who are shut in, those who have been afflicted by the various ailments and maladies of life. We just ask that you dispatch your angel of healing and health, that it may be upon them, that they may know it is well with their soul. We ask also, God, that you forgive us of our sins and our transgressions. Cast them one more time into the sea of forgetfulness 
and remember them no more against us. God bless those who are listening on today who are struggling, struggling with the various physical things of life, mental things in life, emotional things. God, just however people are struggling, God, we just ask right now that you may be a balm in Gilead. Let one word, one syllable be spoken today that will give them encouragement and strength to keep on keeping on. Now, God, we ask that you continue to bless the Simpson Street Church of Christ as we strive to do great things in this part of your moral vineyard. Help us to stay focused and always remind us, God, that it is all about you and not about us, that we don't come here for form, show, or fashion, but we come here to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, bless us as we deliver this word unto your people. Bless the people who are listening to this word that something may be said, that they may be stronger going out than they were coming in. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus, and all who agree said, Amen. Again, thank you for being here with us. I'm Marcus T. Watkins, the proud minister of the Simpson Street Church of Christ. Many of you have been logging on and tuning in for the past seven or eight months, and for that we are grateful and we are thankful. I invite you to turn with us to 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's 1 Samuel chapter 17. We will be looking at verses 32 through 40. That is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 40. And as you're turning there, we want you to know that we're praying for those who are sick, praying for those who are shut in, and we're thanking God for each and every one of you, and we know that things will change after a while for the better. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 40. There the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, begin at verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. And he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. Verse 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. Concluding at verse number 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. I will now read it briefly, quickly rather, from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 40, from the New Living Translation. The Bible says, don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go to fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've taken care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. 
If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. David says in verse 36, I've done this both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Verse 40, the New Living Translation. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. I want to talk to you from the subject today, how to overcome your giants, how to overcome your giants. This, for many of us, is the old familiar story of David and Goliath. It is the story of how David, this young shepherd boy, defeated a giant by the name of Goliath. And so I want to use this passage in this scripture not to talk about David's giants, but I want you to know that we all have giants that we must face. And in the midst of us facing those giants, I want you to also understand and believe before this message is over that you can overcome or defeat your giants. We need to know as believers that we can handle any and everything that comes our way. Can I get a witness? We're living in a time where the people of God must understand the power that we possess. It is like we're walking around. It's like walking around in your house at night in the, in the dark to go to the kitchen, bumping into stuff and knocking stuff down, knowing you have power, but you refuse to flip the switch and turn the lights on. It is like that in many of our Christian lives. We're walking around life bumping into stuff, knocking stuff down, allowing ourselves to be overtaken and overcome by stuff, <clears throat> not realizing the power that we have. Too many spend their whole life knocking down stuff and having to fix things without understanding that God has already given us the victory. God will never put more on us than we can handle. However, he will sometimes put us through situations that we may feel like we can't handle, we must understand that when God has an anointing call on our lives, that there are times when he allows us to go through things, but those things are to prove us in the army of the Lord. Even though sometimes we feel like we can't handle it, and that's all right because the truth of the matter of the fact is we ourselves cannot handle it, but the anointing power of God can. That's why it's important that we participate in Bible study and Sunday school and Sunday worship service. And any time the, the worship service is, 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 is set up, we should participate in anything that pertains to life and godliness. We must pray and study his word. And how do we do that? Because when we do that, we learn how to fight to good fight of faith. And many of us are losing the fight of faith because we have not aligned ourselves with the will and the purpose that God has in our lives. Many of us are losing our good fight of faith because we have not partaken of all the opportunities that God gives us to study his word, to go deep down into his word. And because of that, we are weak and Satan comes in and wreaks havoc on our lives. But David is getting ready to show us that even when giants come into our life, when we go with God's hand on us, we can overcome our giants. We may turn, listen, you, you, you can handle whatever giants come in your life because giants will come. We all have them. We all face them. Giants may come against us, but we can't handle it. 
friends may turn their back on you, but you can handle it. Why? Because not only do we work out in Bible study and Sunday worship service, but we also need to work out at home. In other words, we need to spiritually exercise, not just in Bible study, not just in worship service, but we also need to work out at home. See, at home, you, you ought to bench press. I'm more than a conqueror. At home, you ought to curl. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me at home. Y'all push up all things, work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. You ought to lift. You see, if you lift the wrong weight, it can hurt you. That's why you need an instructor by the name of Jesus Christ. And see, Jesus, as our instructor, there are times when he puts weight on us not to break us down, not to beat us down, but he puts weight on us in order to make us stronger. And so as we look at this text, we see that David is getting ready to fight a giant by the name of Goliath. And the reason I preach this on this morning and on today is because all of us have some giants that we need to face. How do you know that? Because all of us, all of us are walking through the valley and the shadow of death. All of us will face a Goliath before we leave this world, and we need to know how to deal with them. The bottom line is this, you may not want to face your giants. You may want to run from them in fear. You may want to avoid them and hope that they never come your way. But what you really need to do is start preparing for the giants that are coming in your life. You will not escape this life without giants trying to take you over and take you down. You need to know that your giants will not just go away, but they must be faced and defeated. And the good news is God has already given you everything that you need to not only face your giants, but to also defeat your giants. So this passage presents David as a young man. He is a young man filled with faith in the Lord. David is a young man who was not afraid to go to battle with the giants of life and claim victory in the name of the Lord. David was a giant killer. And let me stop for just a moment and tell you that God is looking for giant killers. God is not looking for people who will run and shrink every time they hear Goliath breathing out threatenings. God is looking for giant killers. God is calling up a people. God is calling up a generation that's willing to go to the battlefield, stand four square on the word of God, look the giant, the devil in the eye and tell them that there's no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. God is looking for giant killers and you don't have to be the prettiest. You don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the most popular. God is looking for people who are willing to allow themselves to be poured into by his anointing power, by the faith of Jesus Christ. And when you have Jesus inside of you and the power of God on you, God says you will kill whatever giant comes your way. You will defeat whatever giant stands in front of you. God is looking for giant killers. This giant, they're giants that you're facing today. And regardless of its nature, that giant can be destroyed and it can be defeated. This text gives us precious insight on how it can be accomplished. So let me give you three simple points and then the message will be yours. First of all, if you want to defeat or overcome the giants in your life, you first of all have to have the right motives. See, you, you, whenever you face a giant in your life and you want that giant gone and defeated, you need to have the right motives. A little background on David. David's father, Jesse, had sent David to bring some supplies to, to three of David's brothers who were fighting in Saul's army. When David arrived to the battlefield, he finds Saul and the armies of Israel cowering in fear because of the taunts and the threats of Goliath. It seemed that Israel and the Philistines were carrying out an age-old ritual where each army would produce a champion. In other words, Israel would produce their champion 
the Philistines would produce their champion, and then whichever champion won, then that respective army would also win. The loser of the battle would become the servant of the victor. And so the champion chosen by the Philistines was this giant by the name of Goliath. Goliath was almost 10 feet tall. He looked like a monster covered in brass from head to toe. He was a formidable opponent, and, and his defeat seemed, and his defeat did not seem in question. For 40 mornings and evenings, this giant had taunted the armies of Israel and had been challenging them to send out their champion so that he might defeat them. For 40 mornings and 40 evenings, the Israelites had heard the challenge, and instead of meeting the challenge, they retreated to their tents in fear. However, on this day, it would be different. God had prepared somebody to meet this giant by the name of Goliath. Let me help you real quick. See, God is preparing some stuff behind the scenes that you don't even know yet. Even in your own life, God is getting some stuff ready so that when you meet your giant, when nobody else wants to deal with it, when you meet your giant, God has already prepared you to meet the Goliath and the giant that's coming in your life, and you don't even see what God is doing behind the scenes. But rest assured, when you stand before your giant, when God sends the giant out in the middle of the field and in the middle of the valley to meet you, God has already given you everything you need to defeat your giant. This day it was different. Goliath and his challenges were seen and heard by a young man called David. David's faith and confidence in the Lord rises to the challenge. And David offers to go out and fight this giant. David was motivated, not by pride, but he was motivated by the glory of God. So let me, let, let me share this with you. When you are trying to defeat something in your life, you need to have the right motive. The, right, the first motive ought to be the glory of God. Goliath was mocking the God of Israel, and David could not stand the thought of anybody talking about God. See, when you see the giants you're facing in your life, you need to ask yourself the question, why do I want this giant defeated? What is my motive for wanting this giant dead? Is it because it will make my life easier? Is it because I want bragging rights? Is it because it will give me power in the eyes of everyone else? Is it because it will make me feel better? I would submit that there are only two proper motives for wanting to see your giant defeated. And the first is a desire for the glory of God. This should be the ultimate motivator for all of our lives. Everything we do should be passed through the filter of the glory of God. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you ought to ask yourself, is it bringing God glory? Every action in your life, is it bringing God glory? Every song you listen to and every song you sing, is it bringing God glory? Every giant that you want dead, every obstacle that you want to overcome, you ought to ask yourself, will it bring God glory? I want to do it because it will bring God glory. I don't want to do it because it makes me look good in the eyes of people, the motivator and the motivating factor in defeating your giants and overcoming your giants is to bring God glory. And then the second one is a desire for God's plan to be fulfilled in your life. I love this one. It is part of God's plan for you to face your giant or the giant would not be there. In other words, God allows the giant to come into your view. The reason God allows that is that it is, be, it is a part of God's plan that he has for your life. It may be a part of God's plan for you to defeat your giant. It may also be a part of God's plan for you to live with your giant. 
Are you willing to accept his plan regardless of what it is? See, sometimes we don't kill the giant immediately. There are times when God needs us to contend with the giant. Let me, let me, bless, let me bless somebody real quick. There have been people and circumstances and situations that you have been trying to pray out of your life and keep on praying. There are times when God will answer immediately or quickly, okay? But there are other times when God allows us to wrestle and struggle with the very thing that we're trying to rid ourselves of. The reason he does that is, is because the more we wrestle and struggle with it, it causes us to lean and trust in him. Now, God may not come when we want him, but he always comes right on time. So I submit to you that one of the primary reasons God used David to defeat Goliath was because David had the right motives for wanting the giant dead. One of the reasons you and I do not see our giants fall when we want to see them fall is sometimes we're often praying and operating with the wrong motive. See, the right motive is, God, this, 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 let me teach this real quick. This giant that is in my life, this thing that is before me, this thing that I am struggling with, this thing that I am trying to overcome, what you have to ask yourself is if that thing is, is, is out of your life, how will you give God glory? The giant that's, and, and, if, you, and if you look at 1 Samuel chap, chapter 17, giving God glory is all that David talked about. David, listen, David said, who, look at verse number 26. And David spake to the men that stood by saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? See, for David, it was all about God. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David mentioned God. See, David had the right motives. And when you try to overcome the obstacles and when you try to overcome the giants in your life, when you have the right motive, heaven will get busy on your behalf. Then not only must you have the right motive, but you must embrace the right methods. If you want to defeat the giants in your life, if you want to overcome the giants in your life, you have to use the right method. Some of us have the right motive. We're just using the wrong method. When David's plan to kill the giant reached the ears of Saul, Saul joined the chorus of naysayers, telling David that he couldn't get the job done. Verse 33, Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against the Philistines. Let me, let, let me pause for just a moment. Whenever you have a desire to do something great for God, to do something great in your life that will bring God glory, to move beyond the mediocre, to achieve great things, there will, all, there will always be a you-can't-do-it committee. That, that can, and if you're not careful, that becomes a giant in your life because you're always fighting against that. So Saul joined the chorus, and he sat on the board of the you-can't-do-it committee. Saul said unto David, you're not able to do it. See, there will always be people who tell you what you're not able to do. But when you trust in God, you know what you're able to do. He told, tells David, you can't do it. You will always have a group of people who tell you you can't do it. Hearing that, David was determined in this matter. Saul tried to suit David up with his own armor because David said, now you say I can't do it, but God says I can do it. And so in verse number 38, let me, let me hurry on. David, Saul arms David with his armor and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him also with a coat of mail. So in other words, David says, I can do it. Saul said, you can't do it. Saul says, okay, if you're going to do it, let me give you the right armor. Let, 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 let me give you the right thing to use. However, 
David rejects Saul's armor because it has not been proven. Watch this in his life. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The armor that Saul puts on David, it had been proven for Saul, but it had not been proven for David. Okay, I, I made this point a few weeks ago, and I'll make it again today. The armor was meant to fit Saul and not David. See, what God has for you is for you. There are things that are meant to fit you. And if somebody else tried them on, it wouldn't fit them. God has so orchestrated things that whatever things that he has for your life, and that's why jealousy and envy does not make sense, because what God has fit and made for somebody else, it wouldn't fit me. And so since it would not fit me, it does not make any sense for me to be jealous of you wearing it because even if I took it from you, it still would not fit me. And so Saul takes his armor off and puts it on David, and David says it has not been proven for me. In other words, Saul, it fits you, but it does not fit me. I need to use what fits me. And so David, let me go ahead and preach. And so David takes off of takes Saul's battle regalia off, and David uses what fits him, which is five smooth stones and a slingshot. It didn't fit Saul, but it fit David. And since David was the one that was going into the battle, David had to use what fits him. Let me help some of you real quick. Since you are the one that's going to have to face your custom-made, tailor-made giant, you need to use what fits you. You can't use what fits your mama. You can't use use what fits your grandmama. You can't use what fits your daddy. You can't use what fits your friends. Stop taking advice from everybody else because that advice fits them, but it may not fit you. David says, listen, what you're trying to put on me, Saul, it does not fit. David was determined that he was going to go into battle with the things that had already worked for him in his past. David knew that God would always come through in the that God had always come through in the past and he knew that God would come through right now. David did not know anything about a shield, a spear and a sword. He wasn't schooled in armies, armor or archery. Yet David knew God. He knew that God had always given him the victory in the past, and he knew that God is a God that changes not. David knew that God was greater than any giant. He also knew that God had a plan for his life, and that plan did not include dying at the hand of Goliath. And as long as you know that God has a plan for you in your life, you know that that plan does not include you dying at the feet of a giant. So when David went out to fight, he only took those things that had worked for him in the past. See, you can try any method you please to defeat a giant in your life. You can attend the latest seminars. You can read the newest books. You can climb on the latest bandwagon. But you need to just learn how to live by faith and trust in God. If you want to see the giants in your life lying dead at your feet, then there's some facts that you need to know. There's some facts that you need to understand. You need to know that God is greater than your giants. You need to know that the God who worked it out then is still working it out now. You don't need a new method to defeat your giants. You need a tried and proven weapon like prayer. You need a tried and proven weapon like faith. You need a tried and proven weapon like the word of God. It worked back then, and I declare that it still works today. You need to communicate with headquarters about your giant because prayer is a believer's greatest secret weapon. You need to assault your giant with the word of God because the word of God is like a sword cutting, going, and coming. You need to attack your giant in faith knowing that God has already given you the victory. He will either give you the victory over what you face or he'll give you the victory in what you face. One more time, God will either give you the victory over what you face or he'll give you the victory in what you face. 
In other words, God will either bring you out of it and give you the victory, or God will leave you in it and still give you the victory. <laughs> See, God did not save you to let you fall at the hands of your giant. God is not interested in your defeat. He's interested in your, vic in your victory. Giants are placed in our lives to grow us in the Lord. There, listen, giants are there to strengthen us. And let me give you my last point. You also have to have, you have to expect the right miracle. See, after you have the right motive and you use the right method, you got to expect the right miracle. David walked down into the valley directly into an impossible situation. He was doubted by some. He was ridiculed by the giant. Goliath ridiculed David. Look at verse 42, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, and he was, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou cometh with me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. That's little g. And the Philistine said to David, come to me, and I'll give you thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Saul, I mean, uh, Goliath is ridiculing David. So you, you, you're nothing but a little boy. But what he didn't understand, he may have been a little boy, but he had a big God inside of him. Notice the contrast between the speeches of Goliath and David. In verse 43 through 47, David declared the victory and the glory of God before the battle was even fought. And I'm going to leave you with this, 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 this nugget and this point. Before the battle was even fought, look at verses 43 through 47. I'm going to give you this because I, I want to speak this into your spirit. Verse 43, and the Philistine said unto David, when the Philistine was talking to David about I am but a dog, look at what David says in verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day, see, this is how faith speaks. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. David spoke victory before the battle was ever fought. When you know you're on the Lord's side, you can speak victory even before you get to the battlefield. That is the essence of faith. It will allow you to give your victory speech even before you fight the battle, when you know that God's hand is on your life, you can start quoting and reciting your victory speech even before you throw your first sling, before you throw your first stone at Goliath. Listen, David engaged a giant in battle and won the victory over him. Faith took up the challenge that day. Faith stayed with God and with what had always worked. Faith walked down into the valley. Faith faced that giant. Faith hurled the stone. Faith saw the giant fall to the ground. And faith received a victory. Never underestimate the power of faith in your battles. See, David had so much faith. Oh, my goodness. When you have that kind of faith, I don't care what. Giant, and there's some giants that have come up against us lately. There are some giants, and you might as well admit it now, that have come into your life. But let me tell you something. You can defeat your giants. Look at verse number 51. Listen, when you understand that giants do fall, and you understand that no matter what happens in your life, that God is still in control when everything else is out of control. Look, look at 1 Samuel, and I want you to look at verse number, I think it's verse number 51. I'm going to ask you this question. It's a simple question, but when you look at verse number 51, 
It says, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistine saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Here's the question. Is the giant still there in verse 51? Yeah, he is. Here it is. This is what I want you to take with you. He is no longer 10 feet tall. He's now 10 feet long. Some of you just missed it. The giant is no longer 10 feet tall. He's now 10 feet long. Preach what he's saying. Faith will take that which is over your head and put it under your feet. Goliath was over David's head. But once he was defeated, he was under David's feet. God is getting ready to take some stuff that's been over you and put it under you. And that is your word today. That's how you overcome your giants. It has to be by faith. And when you walk by faith and not by sight, <laughs> that which was standing over you, God will allow it to be under you. Some of us have had some devastating situations in these past few months. Some of us are sitting in the middle of devastating situations even as I speak. But God is good. There are some giants that some of you have to face tomorrow. There are some giants that some of you may have to face today. But giants are custom made for you. Everybody has a Goliath. But that Goliath is designed for you. Every David has a Goliath, but God has called you to be a giant killer. You got to be as if be as David was. Don't go with anybody else's means, methods, or motives. You have the right motive, which is to give God glory. Don't go with anybody else's method because that was designed for them. And then you ought to expect God to do great things in your life. If you're here and you need to give your life to Jesus, you come by hearing the word of God, believing that what you've heard, be willing to repent of your sins, confess Jesus Christ to be the son of God. and We will baptize you for the remission of your sins. All you have to do is call us. The phone number is on the screen. You call us. Let us know what your needs are, whether it be by whether it be needs of prayer, whether it be needs of giving your life to Jesus, you call us and we will be there. Perhaps you are a member of the church, but you just need prayer. Right now, if you're listening online, you can type your prayer request in, and we will do as we always do. Take time out to pray for you especially and specifically. Or you can call the number on the screen, or you can email me, and we will pray for you and with you. See, there will always be giants who keep you from getting, who try to keep you from getting what God has you, has for you. But I want you to remember this, what God has for you is for you. There are always giants, there are always dream killers, there are always people who will tell you what cannot be done. But you go in faith and know that if God's hand is on you and if God's hand is with you, you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or even think because of the power of Jesus Christ. May God bless you and may he bless you extremely well. God sent his son They called him Jesus He This part of our service is called collection. We find the instruction 
in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8. And it reads as follows. But this I say, he which soweth sparely shall reap also sparely. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to give back to you. For all the blessings that you have blessed us. We thank you, Father. We pray that this offering be used for the glorification and the upbuilding of your kingdom. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. part of our service which is called communion which is the Lord's Supper we find the instructions in Acts 20 and 7 when we should partake of the Lord's Supper also in Matthew's the 26th chapter the 26th through the 28th verse goes as follows and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Drink ye, all of it. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you this day, Father, that we take partake of, your, of the Lord's Supper Father, we take the, the cup, which is your blood, and the bread, which is your body. Father, we pray that we take it in a way that will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. These blessings we ask, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This end, this part of the service. Down through the years, I know the Lord's been good to me. Lord, down through the years, I know the Lord's been good to me. Well, down through the I know the Lord's been good to me. Let me tell you that the Lord really been good to me way yeah, down through the through the years the Lord been good to me let me tell you that down through the years I know the Lord been good to me yeah, down down through through the years the Lord been good to me let me tell you that the Lord really been good to me. Yeah, 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 down. The Lord, the Lord's been good to me. Let me tell you that down through the, I know the Lord's been good. 